I've been influenced my whole life by what I think would be referred to as intertribal culture, which is not the same thing now as when I was younger. When I was younger and you would go to powwows, they were very much dances that, although they originated maybe from a specific tribal culture, they had evolved within powwow to become much more open to interpretation. But I think um, for me that kind of um, ability to make something contemporary and to speak to like current times was really um, important. Within this, this intertribal cultural aesthetic, I've paid attention to many things. So for instance, the Tuscarora raised beadwork with whimsies, um, or um, Diné or Navajo weavings is another thing that I've grown up with. And in particular, eye dazzler rugs, which is a particular kind of weaving, really impacted me early on for its optical effect of, of uh, color and shape and pattern. But there's another kind of weaving, which um, is no dyes, monochromatic, and the weavers would allow the natural variations in the color of the dye to play out into these kind of horizontal bands of color that would describe the land. And so the idea of thinking about abstraction as having the ability to actually be representative and not just a kind of emotive, subjective mark making is something that's always interested me. So this particular mural, I was thinking about that kind of banding of color to describe landscape and um, I was looking at the colors in the landscape of New Mexico which I've been going to since I was about 19 and then just with everything else that I've been thinking about over the last few years um, the writing the land is speaking are you listening is something that I drafted but I just started thinking about you know how do we start speaking to the land as if it can be it can hear us and it can respond how do we give it that kind of integrity